Hi, I'm Rick with Baycom. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the radio server. To start, we need to launch the application. Our first screen will be the service screen. This is so you can install the server as a service, so it will automatically run without having to launch any programs. I would highly recommend you use the username administrator and the password, whatever the administrator login is. For this purpose, I'm just going to do local system. Once the service has been installed, you have two options. Start service, save changes, and restart service. In order to save any changes in the TurboNet server, you must click save changes and restart service. If you ever need to uninstall your service, this is where you can do it as well. Our next screen is network. In here is where you can define the ports needed for the system to work. I, I recommend leaving these default. The only thing I would change on here is the VoIP protocol. I recommend changing this to all. That way it allows TCP and UDP traffic. Next is a database. This is where you're gonna sync up the database with the, mic, or, um, with the SQL that you've already installed. So first, we wanna name our database. And if you left the SQL server name default like I did, it'll have SQL Express already on there for you with the local system, so it knows to install it to the local database. Next is a SQL server authentication. I recommended doing the SQL server authentication. That way, you can log in and maintain or manage your database. So the login for that will be SA for the user, and then whatever password you define during the installation. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and hit Create Database. I highly recommend once the database is created to hit Upgrade Database, just to make sure everything took. From here, you can also select the specific path for the database and the audio files. Next is Service Management. Here you can set the GPS polling interval, what information you'd like to pull from GPS, as well as the ARS check radio rate. On top here, I have the auto request presence timeout. So if a radio hasn't responded with any ARS, it will automatically, after five minutes, go ahead and shut that radio off or turn the radio gray. Next is subscriber ARS refresh timeout. This is if the radio has not responded for a period of time or has not sent any information, it will go ahead and try and ping that radio. If it does not hear from it back in the five minutes, which is the time above, it will go ahead and turn that radio gray again. Below is a checkbox. I recommend checking it. It's ignoring unregistered radio units. That way it's not trying to check unregistered radios on the system. Next is the GPS polling interval. To figure this out, you need the number of subscribers times 2.1 divided by number of data slots. That will give you how much time you can pull in between each polling interval. Below, I have my drop-down box. This is where I'm gonna select what information data or what GPS information I want. Below is also an enhanced GPS calculator, so it can tell you the window size and the number of updates per minute. The next tab is the advanced settings. I generally leave this default minus the measurement system. You can go ahead and select American or metric depending on what measurement system you're on. Next is the local agent. By selecting this or checking this, this will allow you to add master radios and repeaters to the network. Below in a subgroup, I have Moto Turbo. When I select this, this is where it allows me to actually add the master radios or repeaters. To add, I just go ahead and select Add, and I can add either a master radio, a repeater, a contro XRC controller, or an XRT controller. I'm going to go ahead and do repeater. The repeater, you're just going to type in the repeater name. And then below here, you're going to want to type a, a unique ID for this particular one. Um, for your first one, you can leave that default. The local port, you're going to want to change this. I recommend starting at 
50050 and working your way up from that. And that way you're keeping yourself off of the same UDP ports as your master repeaters. From here, you're going to take your master repeater IP address and type that in here. Below is your master repeater UDP port and type that in there. If you use authentication keys, this is where you'll type that. Once you've selected all that information, you can go ahead and hit test. By clicking test, this will tell you if you are connected to your repeater. I do not have one hooked up, so it is going to say master peer disconnected or unavailable. If you do get that message and you have one hooked up, please check your repeater settings to verify. Next is the advanced settings. In here is where you're going to match the group call, private call, and emergency call to what's in the repeater. Next is privacy. If you use privacy on your system, this is where you can add your privacy keys. So whether you use basic privacy and it's just an ID, or if you use enhanced privacy where you actually have a privacy key. Next, you're going to program each individual slot of that repeater, whether it does voice, voice and data, or just data. So first, you're going to name the slot. And I'm going to name this voice. Below is your radio ID. This is a virtual radio ID that we're creating for the system. We always use 64250 as a recommendation. Below is the messaging delay. You can leave that default. Below that is a checkbox for use slot for data only. You can check this if this is a data slot only. Below that you'll have your use privacy and you can select your privacy key from there. Below that we have allow TX interrupt. That'll allow a TX or someone to interrupt this, the dispatcher key in up. Next is our second slot. I'm going to label this one data, keep it the same ID, and then below I have my use slot for data only. And you can see that why that is when you watch the basic navigation video. Once I have both slots configured, I can go ahead and go back up to service and hit save changes and restart service so it saves. If I have more to add or if I add a master radio, I'll show you that now. Add master radio. In here, you're going to label your radio. You're going to type in the ID of the radio, which, like I said, I recommend 64250. And then once that's done, you're going to type in the IP address of that radio. By default, this is the IP address. I highly recommend changing that, so that way you can plug in additional radios. When you change the IP address, you want to change the third octet. That way you're keeping them off the same network. Next, you can select what type of radio it is. Below is where you're going to select the playback and the recorder device. So whatever you have the audio cables plugged into is what you'll select for here. If it's a data only radio, you can go ahead and select that and it'll gray that out for you. In the advanced settings for this, we have automatically reset radio alarm, which I leave checked, so that way if uh, any alarms or any emergencies happened on that radio, it would automatically reset that. And then there's use front microphone, allow transmit when PTT is pressed, and use serial port for PTT key up. Generally, you'll leave this just as default. Below here is where you can set the TX timeout. So if someone happens to key that up, it'll only stay keyed up for 60 seconds. The next tab I'll show you is remote agents. This is if you have multiple different servers out there and you want to connect them all into one configuration. Here, we can go ahead and click Add. We'll type our agent name, the IP address of that PC, and then a port. You can go ahead and hit test to make sure it connects. The last and final tab we'll talk about is the license tab. This will show you your license. As you can see, I just have a demo license set up right now. When you download the software, it's going to come with a free 60-day trial of the demo license. It allows you to have 
two dispatchers, two remote rep or two repeaters or master radios connected, and up to 10 subscribers on the system. In order to change the license, you must click License Manager. Next, and you'll have to select the file path of where you save that license. I highly recommend putting it in the TurboNet Enterprise 3.5 folder. Thanks for watching this video. For any other questions, please visit our website listed below.